one four eight.
unto Jesus I surrender all. To Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken take. Me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender now. I feel that sacred flame. Oh, the joy of full salvation, glory, glory to His name. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. 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 And silver or gold, I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by His nail-pierced hands.
and that peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, look in your Bibles to the book of Acts tonight. We'll read a few verses here. Acts chapter number 2. And uh, it won't be long. I promised this morning that I'd uh, be short tonight. I told you I'd have a short preacher, short winded preacher. One that uh, his train of thoughts had a caboose on them. And uh, they didn't even get another preacher. What about that? But uh, I'll try to fill that bill myself this time. As far as the short part's concerned. <laughs> and uh, say a few words to you here tonight from Acts chapter number 3. Now stay with us. Don't nobody leave. Stay with us. We're going down and eat pizza. Enjoy a time of fellowship down there. And uh, I guess you look around that and see who likes pizza and who don't. And uh, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's what we have tonight. That's on the menu tonight and might not be the best in the world but we can get by on it. Acts chapter number th two <clears throat> and ver let's see I'm going to pick up reading verse number 39 Acts chapter two <clears throat> and verse 39 for the promise is unto you and to your children to all that are for all feet of the men of the Lord our God shall call many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourself from this underwood generation then they that gladly received his word were baptized the same day. They were adding them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfast in apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking bread and in prayer. Fear came upon the, uh, every soul. Many wonders and signs were done with apostles. All that believed were together and had all things common. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They continued the day one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, I'll talk a little bit about this scripture tonight right quick and uh, say a few things about Acts chapter number two. And... Uh, well, what I want to talk about is some things, a uh, few things they had here in the early church or the church in Acts that we need, we should have in our churches today. And uh, I thank God for the church. And uh, takes more than just a song or a, 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 a message or a preacher or a teacher or a building to make a church. It takes a group of people, their faith in God, following God, loving God, and serving Him to make up a real church. Amen. And so in our churches today, we need some things that they had in the early church. The Bible said, Paul said, if I tarry long, that you may know how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is a church of the living God, and said it's a pillar and the grounds of the truth. Amen. The Lord told Peter, set upon this rock, I'll be in my church. Now, I'd rather be a member of the church. I'd rather have something to do with the church. I'd rather uh, go to church as any place in the world. Yeah. He said, upon this rock, I'll be in my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I'm proud we're on the winning side. We're in the church. The first thing I want to say about this church, they were shining for Jesus. And uh, we ought to be shining for Jesus today. You know, the children sang that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. And so we ought to be singing that same song today. We ought to be letting our little light shine for the Lord. You so say, I can't do what else. I'm going to talk about what you do and what you can't do. Everybody say, has got a light. They can let that light shine for Jesus in these last days if you're saved by the grace of God. The Bible said when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived they were ignorant, unlearned men, but they took knowledge that they'd been with Jesus. They must have been shining for the Lord. Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. 
and a city set on the hill cannot be hid. Now, we, you don't light a candle and put it under the bushel, but on a candlestick that'll give light to all in the house. And one little candle don't make a city. We've got to get all of our lights shining together and let that light shine in this community and all around where we go and where we work and shine for Jesus, amen, these last days. The Bible said the light shine in the darkness, the darkness comprehend it not. That you may be blamed as harmless sons of God without rebuke in the midst of crooked and burst nation among whom he shines lights of the world. I said there the church was shining. When they stoned Stephen to death, the Bible said his face shined like an angel. They stoned him, called upon the name of the Lord. And he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And the Bible said he fell asleep. So they are shining for Jesus. I want to say number two, not only that church shining for Jesus, but they are sounding out for Jesus. We need somebody to sound out for the Lord today. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, uh, they were sounding out through preaching. We need some old fashioned preaching today. Bible said, cry loud and spare not. And lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And so we need some of that kind of preaching today. Lift up our voice like a trumpet and uh, sound out the gospel for the glory of God in these last days. They're sounding out through prayer. They've been out getting people saved, had a revival, they came back rehearsing what they'd done, what God done for them. The Bible said they prayed. The place was shaken where they are assembled together. And said there's all filled with the Holy Ghost. And I, I tell you, that's a good way to get sounding out for the Lord, get filled up with the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Be ready always to give an answer to every man. Ask the reading of the hope of sin with meekness and fear. I think about in Acts 27. That's what I'm talking about there in the church. Acts chapter 7. When they, in that great shipwreck, you know, just before the shipwreck, they sounded out. See how shallow the water was. A little later, they sounded out again. I got a feeling it'd be good in our church today if we had sound out just a little bit and find out how shallow the water is. We're getting there. If you get in too shallow water, you're going to shipwreck. Better stay out there in that deep water and live for God, and love God, and serve God. And none of this sounded out. But I like this one right here. They are separated from this old world. Look at it right here in verse number, let's see, 44. And all that believed, all that believed were together and had all things common. And I'll tell you, they're separated from this old world. It's hard to get people to separate these days. You just can't hardly get, but, but listen to me. I, I want to tell you something. The Bible and God has always demanded total separation from this old world. If you're going to be alive for Jesus and please God, if you're going to be a real Christian, anybody drift with the tide, but I'm telling you, if you're going to be different from this old world, and the world will see you different, you're going to have to come out from among the world and be separate. I tell you, it's a lot of difference in dark and light. Is that not right? A lot of difference in the, the gospel and rock. Somebody talks about gospel rock, there ain't no such thing. A lot of difference in holiness in Hollywood. A lot of difference in Christians and crooks. You're not hearing what I'm saying, are you? I'm saying you can't straddle the pin on the fence all your life. If you're going to be a Christian, you've got to come out among this world and live for God and be separate from this old world. That other church was separated. People took note to that. The Bible said, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You don't have room for this old, love this old world, love the Lord too. I think about uh, uh, Samuel sent Saul down there that day to destroy all the Amalekites. You know the story. I ain't got time to preach about all that. But he, uh, he sent him down there to destroy all of them. But they got down there and inspired the best of the sheep and the oxen and the things, inspired them, and everything was going well, so, so, supposedly. And uh, so uh, uh, Saul went back to meet Samuel and talked to him. He said, Blessed are thou the Lord. I performed the commandment of the Lord. And about that time, the sheep started bleating over the hill. 
I tell you, sin will tell on you. May not have told on you yet, but it will if you continue on in sin. You can't cover sin. You can cover it for a while. You can't cover it long. Sin will come out on you. He said, destroy them all. All. A double L. He sang that song a while ago. I surrender all. I surrender all. Not part, not half, not two thirds, not 90%, but I surrender all. Separate from this old world totally, total separation. And then this early church, they were shouting it out for the glory of God. Our shouters are about to gone out of business these days, seem like a record around our churches. You don't, you, you don't hear too much shouting anymore. But I, 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 can't, uh, I can't get over that shouting. I like it myself. I, I like to hear people praise the Lord, see people praise the Lord. And uh, the, by, the early church is doing that. That's what I'm preaching about. The Bible said in Acts chapter 3, just the next chapter down where I read, and that lame man that somebody carried him back to the gate of the temple called Beautiful to ask alms every day. Probably had to pick him up every evening and bring him back every morning. But so Peter and John started up that temple today, that temple that morning to, to our prayer. Started up our prayer. He looked out and faced out for Peter and John and expecting to receive some of them. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Got him by the right hand, lifted him up, and he went through that temple walking and leaping and praising God. And I ought to tell you this Sunday high, it's in order to praise the Lord, amen. It's in order to praise God in the church house. It's in order to praise God at home. It's in order to praise God going down the road. It's in order to praise God anywhere. Yes, when you need to praise the Lord, it's in order. Don't have to worry about where it's right or not. Where it's in order, that's always right. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom is redeemed? So I got a song all about being redeemed. Solomon said, I'll bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And, uh, you know, uh, do you know your name's in heaven? How many know? How many knows your name's written in heaven? I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just asking. And, uh, well, the Bible said in this, rejoice not because the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. I don't know if your name's written in heaven or not. I hope it is, and I guess it is. Probably is. But that's when you and God. But an old mind is. So I got a right to rejoice about that. I rejoice for you when you rejoice. And you can rejoice for me probably when I rejoice, and that's good. That's a wonderful thing to do. But I'm proud of salvation to the Lord. And salvation is a personal thing. And I'm proud I know what I have down on the inside. It lives on the inside every day. So the early church was shouting, they had a little shouting. And then I'll say they're satisfied, I'm gonna quit. But that early church was satisfied. It's hard to get people satisfied today, and it's hard to hard to please people, make them happy and, and be satisfied with things. But that early church seemed to me like they're satisfied. They was going from house to house, breaking bread from house to house, and eat their meat with gladness, sameness of heart, praising God. The Bible said having favor among the people and among God. What about that? I mean, they was having favor. Something, uh, something must have been going right, amen. And so they are satisfied. I want to say I'm satisfied with the church, amen. And uh, one thing that I desire the Lord that will I seek. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to hold the view of the Lord and acquire himself. I'm satisfied with my calling. I'm proud of the Lord called me to preach. He could call me to do something else, call somebody else instead of me. I know that. But the Bible said, let every man abide in the same calling where he's called of God. And I'm satisfied with that. I'm happy about that. And uh, I'm proud he satisfied that thirst. I was thirsty one day. I need to drink from that fountain that never runs dry. And I'm proud he satisfied that thirst. He filled a longing down there. He satisfies a hunger soul and fills a longing soul, the Bible said, with good time. Good time. And so the Lord wants us to be happy. This early church, they was having a time. I mean, they was preaching and shining and shouting and separated and, 
and satisfied with what they had and all these many things. And not only that, they were sharing things with one another too. I hadn't thought about that, but they were. And uh, so uh, they was having a time. And we need some of these things in our church today. And ask God to help us and give us, uh, give us uh, the Spirit of God in our heart and our soul and fire us up just a little bit. The fires are dying down so many times today. But it's not the Lord's fault. It's only our fault when that fire dies down. And uh, so we need to ask God to help us. Father in heaven, I want to thank you, Lord, you let us come here this evening, this uh, Sunday night, and, and enjoy a time of fellowship in the house of the Lord. Sing a little bit and, and uh, preach just a little bit. And, and uh, Lord, I just thank you for the fellowship we've already enjoyed tonight and the blessing of the house of God. I appreciate every visitor walk through this door. They have words come to be with us to sing, pray, and help us out in the service. Thank God for visitors. Thank God for people to come in. Thank God for people to worship with us. I love the old-fashioned way, and I love other people who love the old-fashioned way. And I, I'm proud we get together. Enjoy. Enjoy this common salvation we enjoy today. And uh, in fellowship with one another. The Bible said if we walk in the light, he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Thank God for that fellowship. So I just pray you'd help us every day. Let us say, I'm close to God. Seek God. And seek your will for our lives. Seek a Seek, uh, Lord, what you'd have for us and what you'd, uh, Lord, to have us to do every day. We need you every day. We need you every eye. We need you every minute of the eye. We can't walk, Lord, without you holding our hand. And I pray you'll meet every need in this building tonight. And I just thank you so much for uh, being so good to me, Lord. I know I'm indebted. I'll, I'll die indebted to the Lord and I'll be paid for indebtedness. But I sure do appreciate the love and the mercy of God. And all the blessings we've enjoyed in life. So thank you. So thank you. So you have your way in our life and every life in this building. We'll love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I appreciate you coming to church just before we leave. We've got